So you've just built your brand new PC and she's beautiful. But now you've realized you need a little bit more storage. You still have your older computer, but you don't have any more money. Well, no worries. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to reuse your old hard drive or your old SSD from your old PC, or maybe drives you have laying around the house in your brand new PC. I'm gonna show you two different ways. First, the easy way, it takes a few minutes and you're up and going pretty quick. Then I'm gonna show you the much more involved way that actually takes you a little less time, but it is a little more dangerous. But anyway, let's get started. So first we're gonna go ahead and right click on the start button, shut down our sign out and click restart. We're going to want to enter the BIOS, so start tapping the delete key or whatever key it may be to enter the BIOS on your PC. And now in your BIOS, it's going to look different than mine. I have the ASRock X670 Pro RS motherboard. So we'll come over to the boot section. Again, it may be different on your motherboard, but we're going to want to take a look first off over here under boot option number one. Just remember what this says, because when we install the other drive, it might try to take its place. So then from here, we can just hit escape and then enter to discard changes since we didn't make any changes we're going to boot back into windows to shut down the computer so that we can insert the new drive and then when we're back in windows just right click on the start button shut down or sign out and shut down now before we get everything inside of the computer i want to show you everything outside of the computer to make it a little bit easier when you get in there so first off we're going to start off with the hard drive oh not that one that's not going to work for you we're gonna start off with a hard drive. The connection is going to be similar to an SSD, exactly the same actually. For this example, I'm gonna show you on a hard drive. So you see right over here, this is the SATA power connection and this is the SATA data connection. The SATA power comes from the power supply and the SATA data comes from the SATA cable that goes connected into the motherboard. So for example, this is the power supply and this is where it is inside of the system. Typically, of course, because most systems are different. So grabbing one of these cables from the power supply, we can see here it is a strand. There's a few of these SATA power connections. And to give you a close up example, we can see that right over here. And then it kind of tilts off over here to something that looks like an L. That's going to go right into this SATA power connection. That little L goes right here and connects right in place. And again, this cable comes from the power supply. And then we have the SATA cable. Now the SATA cable typically comes with a motherboard, but if you don't have any, I'll go ahead and list some down below so you could check them out on my Amazon affiliate link. They go connected to the motherboard, then to the drive. On the motherboard, typically on the bottom right hand corner of the motherboard, though it can be in many different places. Sometimes you could find it here, over here, and maybe a few other spots. This happens to be a 90 degree angle. Most of them are going to be straight down. On this one, we can see right over here, six SATA data connections right over here. Again, they can be anywhere along over here. We're going to grab that cable and it has that same little L connector that the SATA power connector had right over here so that we could see that there. And that's going to go ahead and match with the L connection right over here on the motherboard. So we can connect it into any one of those SATA connections. Then we're going to go ahead and grab that SATA cable and just plug it in right into any one of those six SATA connections. Then we're going to grab that hard drive that we just connected that SATA power connection to. Then we're gonna grab that SATA data cable and just plug that right in there. So now we've got the hard drive connected to the motherboard through the SATA cable, and then the hard drive connected to the power through the SATA power cable. So let's go ahead and put this inside the system. So as I showed you, we're going to be using the SATA cable and the SATA power. Again, the SATA data cable typically comes with the motherboard. I'll include links down in the description below where you can purchase them in case you don't have any. It goes connected to the motherboard and then into the drive. And then the SATA power goes connected directly from the power supply and then comes out to this. If you don't have 
a SATA power or maybe you don't have enough SATA powers, I'll have a Molex to SATA power converter or a SATA power that branches out to two or three SATA power connectors. That way you have more space. This is going to be different on every single case. You may not have this case, you might have a different one. So for this particular case, I'm just going to go ahead and remove this tray. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this drive right over here. Then I'm going to match up these holes right down here. It might take a second, match them up here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and screw them in. So give me one quick second. So then now I've gone ahead and secured the drive by installing all four of the screws. And now we can just slide this back in here. And then we'll go ahead and put in the thumb screw over here, screw it in. Okay, so now as I showed you previously, we're going to go ahead and connect the SATA power into the drive. And then the SATA data cable into the drive. All nice and neat. Now we'll go ahead and put on the side panel. Now we'll go ahead and turn her on real quick. One sec. And now just in case, we'll go ahead and tap the delete key again to go into the BIOS real quick. So now in the BIOS, we'll come over to the boot section. Now that we've installed both drives, since they both had data on them, these were both Windows drives. If they weren't, this would have showed something else, but you already know that you had a Windows boot manager. So see, now if we were to go ahead and restart the computer, we'd get a blue screen or some kind of error because it's trying to boot off of the old Hitachi drive. So now all we do is go up and then press enter on the Sovereign Rocket 4 Plus Gaming. That's the drive we had before. And that sets itself at the very top. You can't tell here because all we see is Windows Boot Mana. But now you see here, if you go back in, it's highlighted Windows Boot Manager Sovereign Rocket 4 Plus Gaming instead of the Hitachi. Okay, so now we'll go ahead, hit F10. Now we actually have some changes to save and then press yes to boot back into Windows. All right, so when we're back in Windows, we can right click on the start button and go into disk management. Under disk management, now we can see the new drive or kind of the old drive. Which one is it? An easy way to find out since we changed it in the BIOS to boot off of the Sovereign Rocket or our original install on the new computer, we can see here the C drive, that is that two terabyte drive, our Sovereign Rocket, then the old drive, the D drive, that used to be the C drive on the old computer, here is now the D drive. Now we can always come under here under File Explorer, this PC, and then we can see here our C drive, and in case you need to look around for data, but you should have your old desktop back up here. And then the D drive is your old drive, the Hitachi 500 gig drive, and it looks relatively similar. Okay, so unfortunately here, because it has those partitions, you can't just right click on it and delete. They're grayed out. You can do that here, but that'll still give you 465 gigs. Mind you, you can clear it, but still you're missing out on all that extra space. And you can't do that here either. So now let me show you the easy way. So we'll go ahead, open up Edge, Chrome, Firefox, whatever you use, and type in partitionwizard.com. Then we'll hover over home user. We'll go to partition wizard free and click download now. We'll be using the mini tool partition wizard the free version. Then we'll go ahead and open it up here, then click OK here. And this tells you everything the free edition brings. This is all we need right now, basic disk partition. We don't need anything else. If you want additional features, go ahead and buy the professional edition, but we'll go ahead, continue installing the free edition. Next, you can select whatever you like here. I'll leave it on by default. And then next, all the way through. Then we'll go ahead and click finish, which will launch the mini tool partition wizard. And of course they want us to buy it. <laughs> so close out all the ads. All right, so here, the way they laid it out is perfect. Here we can see disk one is the Hitachi drive. That's the one we know we want to get rid of. And then disk two is the Sovereign Rocket 4 Plus Gaming. It's kind of confusing the way that they laid out drive one and drive two, but that actually goes back into DOS, which I'll show you in a second but it is nice the way that the partition wizard has that laid out. It not only shows you that it's one or two, but it shows you the drive name as well. That's a great feature. So we can either do it from down here or from up here. I'd rather do it up here because I see the drive name. And when we click up here, it automatically clicks up here as well. So all we do is right click on disc one 
and then delete all partitions. Big warning here, we will be deleting everything off of that old drive. There won't be a few files, there won't be your favorite files, there'll be zero. It'll be a completely, essentially brand new drive. Just wanna make that clear. Okay, so then delete all partitions. Are you sure you want to delete everything on partition one or disc one? Yes, yes we do. And then to make double sure, click apply over here and then yes. Okay, perfect. So we can do a little more here, but we're gonna go ahead and click okay here. Notice it shows disk one unallocated. One way to do it would be right clicking under the unallocated and create, and then we can label it old drive, whatever we want to. And then we can also change partitions here. I'm going to leave that if anything for a different video in case you're interested, click okay here, then click apply. And yes, this should only take a few seconds. Quick enough. Then if we go under File Explorer, this PC, we can see our new old drive. I'm gonna go ahead and create some partitions on this drive because now I'm going to show you the slightly more difficult way to do it. Closing out of here, I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this drive and I'm gonna split it. Okay, I'm going to split it. Uh, let's do this way here. And then I'm gonna split this one again Let's do this way here. Nothing relevant, I'm just playing with it to show you. Apply, yes. And okay. So now if we go back into File Explorer and this PC, now we have a bunch of different drives, but actually it's all that one Hitachi drive split into three separate drives. So that was the easy method, showing you a little bit on Partition Wizard. It's a great tool, it's free, but if you want more features, you'd have to buy it. This is in no way sponsored by Partition Wizard or anything, just a tool I use occasionally. But anyway, let's move on. Okay, so closing out of all of this, we're gonna go ahead, click on the Start button, type CMD. We're going to right click on the command prompt and then run as administrator. Okay, here we're going to go ahead and type disk part then list disk. Okay, here it shows us disk zero is a 500 gig drive or 465 gig drive. Then disk one is a 1.863 gigabyte drive or 1.8 terabytes or two terabytes. Then we'll go here and select disk zero. And now we'll type in clean. This part succeeded in cleaning the disk. So now we'll go ahead, hit exit here, or type exit here, and then close out of the command prompt. Then we'll right click on the start button, disk management. Now it comes up as a brand new disk, like we bought it from the store. So then here we make sure we select GPT. We can use MBR, but GPT is a newer standard and is also required for disks over two terabytes. Then we'll click okay here. Now it comes up as an unallocated disk. Simply right click under the unallocated disk, new simple volume, we click next, next, assign your drive letter, give it whatever name you want, older drive two, make sure perform a quick format is enabled. If not, it will take quite some time to clear, then click next, finish. Then within a few seconds, we'll have a brand new drive. Here we go, it pops up. This part is the easier method. Actually, it's the original method, the way we did it back in the DOS days. But because it is a lot more involved because you don't see pretty pictures, you don't know exactly what you're doing, you don't see the name, I like to show you Partition Wizard first. That way you can see what you're doing within this part to give you a better idea. Now you can impress your friends. I know how to use the command prompt. But anyway, aside from that. Now, this works on M.2 SSDs regular SSDs, hard drives, like I showed you here, it works on every single drive. If you bought a brand new drive and you want to figure out how to install it as a secondary drive, that'll help you. But in case you might wanna check out this video as well, that one is focused solely on a brand new drive right out of the package. This is Iggy with This Bytes for you out. See you guys.